Welcome back. In this set of slides, I'm going to be talking about something we call premise indicators and conclusion indicators. This uh, video is part of a three-part series which provides more information on identifying arguments. These are um, additional techniques and concepts that can help in determining whether or not some passage expresses an argument. Um, this video is going to cover premise indicators and conclusion indicators, but the other videos in the series are listed here on this slide. So when you're trying to tell whether or not some passage is an argument or is not an argument, um, there are some questions you can ask to help you determine that. The first question listed here um, is really the most important one. It's in a way what defines a, an argument. And so if you look for this um, and you accurately determine whether or not the passage includes this, that alone will tell you whether or not the passage includes an argument. So the question is, is one of the claims in this passage being argued for on the basis of another of the claims or um, any other of the claims or some set of the other claims? In other words, are some of the claims intended as justifications for others? If so, then the set of claims is an argument, and if not, then the set of claims is not an argument. Another clue you can use, uh, not as fail-proof as the first one, but useful sometimes to get a handle on, again, the question of whether or not a passage is an argument, is the question of whether or not there are these things we're calling premise indicators or conclusion indicators in the passage. So I'm gonna say more about what those are. Here I have a list of some words that often signal that what follows those words is a premise in an argument. These are what we call premise indicators. And I have a list of words that often indicate that what follows them is a conclusion of an argument. Okay, so words like therefore, the word therefore, for instance, you'll almost never see this word except when it's indicating the conclusion of an argument. So it's a very strong conclusion indicator. The word so is often used in the same way or hence, but um, so is sometimes or consequently, so or consequently are sometimes used in uh, ways that don't signal a conclusion. So you have to be careful when you use this method to really think about how the word is used in the context of the passage. Um, the, you have to ask whether or not it's being used as a conclusion indicator or as a premise indicator. Look at the first two example passages on this slide. So the first reads, almonds are high in protein, so they're excellent energy boosters late in the day. Uh, here, the word so is pretty clearly working as a conclusion indicator. If we were to represent this argument in standard form, we would have one premise and one conclusion. The premise is almonds are high in protein, and the conclusion is almonds are excellent energy boosters late in the day. Um, the so is, is clearly indicating that there's supposed to be a justificatory relation between one part of the sentence and another part of the sentence. Another way to put that is it's indicating that some part of the sentence, some claim that's made in the sentence, is intended as evidence for another part of the sentence or another claim made in the sentence. The second uh, passage reads, given that it's a university event, maybe we shouldn't engage in illegal activities. Okay, so the given that in this example uh, is pretty clearly indicating that what follows it is a premise or some bit of evidence that is supposed to support um, what follows later in the sentence. So here, given that is serving as a premise indicator and you'll see it's, list, it's in our list of premise indicators there in the upper left-hand side of the screen. So in this case, just as in the first one, um, the given that is serving as, a, um, as, an, as an indicator of this type. In the second example, it's a premise. We have a premise indicator. In the first example, we have a conclusion indicator. So take a moment now to do a little exercise. Um, in a moment, just pause the video and see if you can identify the premise indicators and the conclusion indicators in the remaining examples. And then um, once you've done that, uh, you can start the video again and I'll give you the correct answers. So go ahead and take a moment to do that. Pause the video and answer the questions yourself. OK, 
Okay, here are the correct answers. Um, in each of these cases, actually, we have a premise indicator. So number three, the because, is serving as a premise indicator, since what follows it immediately is a premise. Um, the, in number four, since is serving as a premise indicator. And in number five, is shown by the fact that is serving as a premise indicator. Now, I mentioned this earlier, um, but I want to you know, emphasize it uh, by, by saying it again, that not every case where one of these words appears is a case where the word marks a premise or a conclusion. I want to give you some examples where these words are used and they are not um, serving as premise indicators or conclusion indicators. Look at the first two examples here. Uh, both of these passages include the word since, which is in the list of our premise indicators, um, but only one of these is using the word um, as, a, as a premise indicator. So can you tell which one is using the word as a premise indicator and which one is not? You can go ahead and pause the video and try to do that if you like, and then I'll give you the answer. So in the first case, since is not working like a premise indicator or as a premise indicator, okay? Um, in the second one, in number seven that is, it is. Uh, so number seven reads, since there aren't many people here, I guess the band isn't well known. It's pretty clear that the claim there that there aren't many people here is supposed to be evidence for concluding that the band isn't well known. Right? It's being treated as some reason to believe that the band isn't well known, some evidence for believing that other thing. Whereas in the uh, first passage, number six on the slide, uh, since is not signaling that kind of relation. What follows the since here is just a temporal period, the 1970s, okay? Presumably lasts from 1970 all the way through the end of, of uh, the year 1979. That's you know, the entirety of the 1970s, 1970, from January 1st, 1970, all the way to December 31st, 1979. Um, and the claim is that there hasn't been a single great new rock band during that time. But it's not that any, um, any one claim is being offered in support of another claim here, right? So the sense is not serving as an indicator that there's some premise that is providing evidence for a conclusion. Rather, here, the sense is working as a kind of temporal marker, all right? It's just telling us that, um, that uh, there's a period of time since the 1970s is basically referring to a period of time from January 1st, 1980, all the way to the present, right? Or, and continuing on, uh, but all the way to the present, really, that, that's what the word, you know, since in this context would mean. Um, and what's being said is that there hasn't been a single great new rock band during that time. Um, so again, uh, in the second case, since is working like a premise indicator. In the first case, the word since is doing something different. It's communicating something about time, but it's not communicating something, as in the second case, is not communicating something about uh, relations between two claims where one is supposed to provide evidence for the other. Now you might be wondering, how do I tell whether or not one of these words uh, is being uh, used as a premise indicator or a conclusion indicator, okay? So um, there are two tests that you can do. They're not perfect tests, but they are at least, they're sort of like indicators of whether or not they're, the words are serving as premise indicators or conclusion indicators. So one is you can ask, does the indicator connect to different claims? And what we see when we look at the comparison of six and seven is it doesn't because the 1970s is not a claim. It's not a declarative sentence, right? So since is not um, serving as a connector or a um, descriptor of a connection between two independent um, clauses or two, uh, two independent claims, I should say. The other test that you can use is something called the substitution test, which is um, you ask, can I substitute in one of the other premise indicators for the one that's in the sentence now um, and get a sentence with the same meaning, okay? Um, and again, neither of these are perfect, but let's try using this substitution test for six and seven. So imagine we substitute the word because for since, okay? 
Um, in the first case, the sentence would read, because the 1970s, there hasn't been a single great new rock band. That is an entirely different meaning to the sentence. So number six would fail the substitution test in that way. So that would tell us that it's that since is not working like a premise indicator in that sentence. What about the second one? Because there aren't many people here, I guess the band isn't well known. Okay, so here, as long as we read the because as indicating that um, that it's signaling a reason, then this does in fact mean the same thing as since, okay? Um, again, I, I, I did say, and I, I wanna emphasize, these are not perfect tests, they're just kind of additional um, techniques you can use to try to get a handle on or get a sense of whether or not some expression is being used uh, as a premise indicator or as a conclusion indicator. Um, for seven, some, some better sort of choices for substituting phrases might be given that. So like given that there aren't many people here, I guess the band isn't well known. Or seeing that, seeing that there aren't many people here, I guess the band isn't well known, okay. Um, so yeah, so with that, I think we're, we're almost uh, done with everything we need to do with premise indicators and conclusion indicators. I will um, give you an opportunity now to do yet another exercise and to try to identify whether um, the use of premise of words on this list in items eight through 11 on this slide are, um, are premise indicators or conclusion indicators, okay? So and you can use the connecting claims test and or the substitution test to try to get a handle on that. So go ahead and pause the video in a moment and try to determine um, whether or not items eight through 11 have premise indicators or conclusion indicators and what those are, okay? And then when you're done, I will start the video again and give you the answers. Okay, here are the correct answers. So the items in green um, are uh, indeed premise indicators and the items in red are not. So hopefully you were able to distinguish those. Um, and uh, if not, uh, maybe you, you know, need to watch this video again, try some of the practice problems about it, um, and, uh, and or write um, me an email to ask questions. And just one last point, uh, I, I, which is a reiteration of something I started with, your best test to determine whether or not a passage contains an argument is the question, just to ask the question, are there some claims that are being offered as evidence for other claims within the passage? That's your gold standard for whether or not a passage contains an argument. But you can use the um, presence of these words that fall into the premise indicator and conclusion indicator lists. You can use those as a clue to whether or not um, that other thing is happening. That is whether or not some claims are being used as um, premises to support other claims. When you do that, you have some additional techniques you can use to try to find out whether or not those words are, are um, serving that function in the passage. And that's what I call the connecting claims test and the substitution test. Um, if those tests and that way of thinking is um, not terribly helpful for you in doing this and you find just asking the first question easier, that is just fine too because um, that, again, really is the gold standard for determining whether or not a passage is an argument. So if you're able to do that effectively, all the other stuff is really just um, incidental or, or second, of secondary importance.